Good morning, 5.30 a.m. Just gonna start with a little bit of safety first. I've put my uh, my dog's bike and rope in. You know, it doesn't cost much, but uh, I very much recommend it because when well, it's drizzly and the banks are slick, you know, it's been raining for about two weeks. It could, um, I mean, I don't want to sound dramatic, but it could save your life. But what it will do more often is actually just save you from ruining your day. You don't want to slip down here, end up with wet, muddy clothes and all that. Maybe like a, a grazed arm that's just going to completely hack you off. So, yeah, I took my bag down and I thought, nah, it's not worth it. Get my rope out, get myself down nice and steadily. Well, while it's raining, wet and muddy, forgive me if I do my casting from under the brolly here. Uh, we'll see how this goes, but uh, that's coming down now. Yeah, we've got what we've got today. It should should blow over, Carol says. We'll be gone in a couple of hours and then hopefully ELO will start playing. And yes, I have alarms on today. I'll explain why later. <laughs> okay, second rod going out, and the first rod has already bounced a couple of times. Hard to tell if it's a fish. Uh, river anglers will know this, but you sort of tune in after a while to what's just the river moving a rod and what's what's a fish. So yeah, it kind of seemed a bit violent, but I don't know. We'll get this one out and uh, concentrate a bit harder. side, two turn quite girls. Good morning, welcome back to the Dangos Outdoors YouTube channel. If you haven't watched any of my videos before, feel free to click subscribe. It is free and then you'll get my videos straight in your inbox. You won't have to search for them. And uh, yeah, gives me a bit of a boost as well. I am quite motivated by the numbers. <laughs> yeah, so today I'm out barbel fishing. It's my third barbel session of the season. And I'm back on the same river you saw me finish in in my last video. Now I'm a couple of swims further up because the swim as in last time is pretty much underwater. We've had about two meters of rain in uh, what well, at least the river came up two meters in the two weeks between now and my last session and uh, yeah it's been sort of washed out a bit doesn't look comfortable so i've come up here where there's still a bit good bit of current going you can sort of see the, the foam going through out there that's always a good sign certainly when i fish for trent that's one of the things i look for and it's, it's kind of deep a yeah, little bit soft on the bottom but we'll see we've already had a couple of bangs there which i, I think were fish now the alarms i know you purists are going to be screaming oh he's got alarms on now look at him Two rods and the cart rods, now he's got alarms. What's he playing at? That and the lead clips. <laughs> I know what it's like, I'm in them barbell Facebook groups. If you're not freelining a worm with a rod up your, yep, you're not, <laughs> you're not barbell fishing. But the thing is, I'm probably gonna fish for quite a while today. It's, um, it's not even seven yet. And, um, well, it's about half six still. And I'm probably gonna fish until about 10. I've also come off the back of doing seven days in a row at work so at some point i'm gonna nod off <laughs> so i put the alarms on i don't normally do it on day sessions on, on the yorkshire rivers so yeah please forgive me but uh, I, I don't care you know me i'll just do what's needed on the day so yeah alarms are on we're nice and comfortable might have to move my chair and things when this rain goes uh, it should be basically done by 10 and then it should stay sort of cloudy and that all day which is pretty good for a daytime bike but I'm absolutely buzzing about staying until the sun dips and maybe even doing half an hour, an hour in the dark. You can do that in this club, which is great. But don't charge you extra to stay when it's getting good like some of the other clubs do. <laughs> so yeah, I'm pretty excited for that. Oh, a little fish topping. Usual stuff, I'll show you what I'm doing later, but for now, I'm just gonna chill out a bit, have an hour of just staring at the rod tips. <laughs> 
Wow, wow. I love it. I absolutely love it. We're in. <laughs> Filming here. Yeah. Right. Remember the snags. Oh, she's up on the surface already. I must admit, I was nearly drifting off there and the alarm went and then I looked and the rod had stopped. So I was like, which one was it? <laughs> what have we got? Oh, it's snag already by the feel of it. Come on. Is it? Oh no, we're still on. Bloody snags in this river. We've lost it, we've lost it. Don't swear. That was awful from the start. Bent the hook out, well, bent the point. I couldn't do anything about it, I couldn't let it in them trees. Oh, let's re rig and get back in it. Well, that is infuriating. I tied up a few hook links before this session because I thought this might happen. <laughs> but yeah, I didn't expect my first fish to come off like that. It got in a bit of a snag here and then did a big run for those bushes. And what was I supposed to do? I couldn't let it get in them. So I just had to hold on tight and hope it turned, it didn't. And I suppose in that scenario, you'd rather the hook pulled before it got in the snag, then um, you get in there and you lose everything and the fish is stuck, potentially tethered down there. So I suppose on balance, it's a lesser of two evils, but I would prefer it to be in my net. <laughs> yeah, I just have to remember that. So we've got snags all around. Yeah, let's get this back out. <laughs> Gonna relax with some uh, PVA bag tying, I think. Settle the nerves. Otter on the far bank. Well, just working its way up the far bank, swimming. Let's see where it pops up. But look at that for a beast. That's a big one as well. Oh, that is a big one. God. About four foot long, that. Proper big dog thing big head on it when it came up. Where have you gone now, mate? <laughs> I've just turned the camera off after filming that otter and the downstream rod's away. <laughs> it doesn't feel particularly barbely. Where have I got you pointing? I think this is going to be a chub or a bream. <laughs> bream! Kind of want it to fall off in a way. You want... No. <laughs> oh, you're going to want landing, aren't you? There we go, all that current, we catch a bream. <laughs> well, at least something's out there. Oh, 
I'm in again. I don't know what we've got this time. Feels more barbely. We'll try and let it play in open water a bit more. So it's coming round right up. Oh, not again. I'm going to let it play out there a bit more. It's fine. It's coming, it's coming. Oh. I think we've got something on the downstream rod as well. Unless this one's picked it up. I think something might have got away of a downstream rod while I was landing that one because they weren't crossed at one point, they weren't crossed at all, and it went tight and then just went really slack. They're like, oh, that's a bit weird. So, yeah, I don't know, but <laughs> they're both in. <laughs> and that's a decent fish, so we'll let it rest. And then I think I'll probably take up the bank or do it here. Yes! <laughs> Found a nice little patch here to sort the fish out. I'm going to weigh it. One reason is because I've got some new scales that I want to try and also because uh, it looks like a decent fish. It could be maybe eight or nine pounds, something like that. So yeah, we'll find out. It is a wet, muddy day down here. But man, remember this is Yorkshire. This ain't the Trent. Oh, of course there's a, I think they're F-15s. Wanging about. I don't mind though, you know I'm a bit of an airplane nerd. Oh, that's me, I've got the rod on the alarm there. A couple of boilies on that one. Let's get that oh, on my chair there. That's a big Yorkshire barbel. Come on. Now I'm holding it, it doesn't feel like all that much, but I've got my toys out now, so I might as well play with them. <laughs> Let's see. Eight ten, so we're looking at eight pounds there. That's pretty cool.
eight pound barbel, so my biggest so far from this river. Had that bream and we lost one, so we've had three bites. I think I might have had a fourth bite as well. Excuse that guy. <laughs> That's awesome. Ah, oh, there's two of them. Great. <laughs> Oh, that's a cool fish though. Quick show of the other side. Nice. Yeah, I'm well chuffed with that. That is brilliant. Got plenty of a day left to go. Good over 10 hours of fishing, maybe 12. <laughs> Let's get a couple more. Right, a couple of pictures. I set it free. CPR, catch, photo, release. Well, this fish have had quite a while in the net now. It's been kicking and splashing, so we'll just turn the net over, send it on its way. Go on. Off you go. Yeah. Oh, you see that? Nice. That's when you know you've done your job right. <laughs> So that's both the rods back out. I think I've got company now. I think there might be someone upstream of me feeder fishing. But uh, that's why I got up so early because I know it's a kind of popular spot, this I think, in the club. So yeah, half four start to get down there to get a decent swim. Glad I did. Right. We're in again. <laughs> Bit quiet there for about an hour. So on speaker because we're just booking a holiday at the moment. <laughs> I'm suspecting another bream. Well, it's come off, whatever it was. Yeah. Either a bream or a small chub. Not to worry then. Didn't scream off like a barbel, so I'm not too bothered. Oh, that is one ugly boat. It's called virtual reality. It's like a bag of dicks. Okay. I think we might be in again there. Oh, just trying to get it out of danger from tree down there. Oh yeah, we're out, we're out, we're good. Let's keep it moving there. Oh, mate. That first run, middle of a bright day, just thinking about maybe having lunch or something and boom, 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 boom. Desperate to get in his string.
big vortex is coming up. That's brilliant, that's number two in the net. I'll get it arranged a bit better so it can be out there a little bit more. But that's so cool, that's two barbel now. And uh, we're not even into the best part of the day. Well, in my opinion, the best part of the day. <laughs> Man, get in. Right, downstream rod on the pellet uh, hook link this time. Hook bait. <laughs> oh, you can tell it was a half four start, can't you? Well, I think I'm gonna weigh this one as well. Good average size these fish. Uh, that last one was eight pound. This must be around about that same sort of area. Pop that out. Does make you wonder how big the ones you lose are though, doesn't it? <laughs> if I'm landing these sort of eight pounders, what am I losing? Okay. Right, quick show, because I like to have a guess myself. <laughs> What do you reckon? Seven around there. Hey, eight five. So that'll make it um, oh, seven eleven. There we go. <laughs> Quick bit of maths there. Brilliant average size today. Come on. A few little marks on this one, just like the one I caught the other day. But still, great, that's two fish, that's awesome. Quick switch. That dark patch there, really interesting fish, this one. All right, that's cool. Couple of pictures and we'll get this back. Lovely, thanks for playing. All right, this fish is going crazy, so let's just... <laughs> Let's just let it go. Go on, Em. On your bike. Just like that. And, oh yeah, you are giving it some. Oi! <laughs> Under the trees, but that'll do. There we go, fish is back, nice and happy. So yeah, big shout out to the bailiff and his mate who uh, says he watched my videos and um, yeah, sorry lads, I, sh I should have um, I should have asked your names, but I'm, I'm, uh, I'm pretty socially inept at the best of times, never mind while I'm fishing. I'm better at talking to a camera than I am people, but anyway, it's just, just the way it is. Uh, yeah, thank you for being so kind and uh, congratulating me on my fish. Let's look at the setup. So, it's what I use a lot of when I'm barbel fishing. Uh, I've tweaked it ever so slightly, but we've got about 18 inches, two foot of 12 pound mono going down to a size eight hook. This time it's a, do that, you see a bit better, a Drenin Barbel Specialist hook. I've normally used the um, Corda Wide Gapes, but I thought, well, maybe I should use a hook that actually says Barbel on the packet, and it seems to have worked. They, they weren't quite as sharp as the Wide Gapes. They've certainly got a point. They've not got that, like, super long fine point, so maybe they'll stay sharper for longer, who knows, but. Yeah, this one's good to go back out, so it's sort of giving credit to that. And hook bait on that one was 14 mil halibut pellet. And what I've got on the top there is just a little bit of boily that stops it from, well, knocking the hair out. So, well, the hair, hair stop, because you can see it can move on the hair because it's pre-drilled. So I just put something between the pellet and the boily stop, and then it can't come off. And yeah, you can do what you like. You can use pellet bands, you can um, tie them on all sorts of things, but that's how I do it. And it works, works really well. 
I'll just thread a PVA bag down the hook link, wrap it in paste, cast it out. I might show you that later, but for now, I just want to get fishing again. <laughs> I told everyone at work that I wanted free fish today. I meant free barbel. I've caught free fish, but if we could make it free barbel, that'd be cool. Spitfire, Spitfire, Spitfire in D-Day markings, amazing. <laughs> cool, so today I've seen an otter, herrings, herons, sorry, uh, kingfishes and a Spitfire in D-Day markings, that's pretty cool, awesome. I was actually just winding in my right hand rod to recast. The left started going and I assumed at first I'd knocked it so I was like, what's going on? <laughs> it's a fish of course. There. there we go. That's free it free. Come on. Yes. So that's free barbel now. That's what I wanted from today. It's just gone three o'clock. We've got another five, six hours maybe. <laughs> uh, if we get another couple, that'd be awesome. But I'm happy with today. It's been good, hasn't it? <laughs> it's been really good. <laughs> nice one, right? No way in this one. Let's just, let's just get it back. You're cool. Yeah, and it's lively, so take advantage of that and get rid of it while it's, uh, while it's kicking. Okay, well, this one is kicking a lot, so I think we'll just <laughs> say goodbye. Off you go then. Get your head over that. Yep. Yeah. Oh yeah, nice. That's the rods back out again. And about every 30, 40 minutes, I'm catapulting out, 
a few 10 mil boilies and a few 8 mil cart pellets. A, a fair bit upstream, so I'm confident they land where I'm fishing. You know, it's quite deep and a little bit flow on today. Gosh. The boilies I'm doing two at a time. I'm just spreading them all over the swim, really. I kind of want the barbel just coming across bits everywhere. Either maybe going a touch far. Yeah. And the pellets, eight mils, so I'm again confident they get to the deck. I think if I was using sixes or fours, they'd just, just disappear out there, really. Brilliant. Seems to be getting me more bites, you know, and there's definitely like a run up to the bites. The rods are knocking and then I get a, then I get a take. Stuck on a couple of branches there. <laughs> Hardcore, it's number four. Do the power take a shower. On the boilies this time, so that's two for boilies, two for pellets. Nice. About the same size as the last one, what's that? Five pounds, something like that. Just talking to a lad who said there's a lot, sort of three and a half to six pounds. I don't mind them. <laughs> That's four barbel, that's awesome. Haven't caught four barbel for a long time. That's cool, let's get it back. get this in, that's number five. <laughs> Thank you. 
boilies this time. So that's three for boilies, two for pellets. And yeah, possibly the smallest of the day. That's still pretty cool, look at that. Right, I'm gonna get this fish back. I'm gonna wind that rod in, I'm gonna redo them both. I'm gonna set a bite camera going because hopefully I might be able to get a bite or two on film. See if we get a proper run or something. Yes. <laughs> Number six, which I'm pretty sure would make it my best ever barbel day. Numbers wise, that is. And a really pristine one to boot. That's, I really like the sort of salmon pink coral thing, fins that they have. Barbel are awesome, aren't they? <laughs> I love it. Right, get this one back quickly. Not got much longer. I might only give it maybe another hour. I could stay like another three, but <laughs> that half four start is catching up with me. What I'm gonna do is just have one last cast with my last PVA bag and that'll be it. I'll give it another hour and either we'll catch a fish or we won't. If I do catch one, I'll probably just wind in and go, I think, because yeah, it's catching up with me now. I'm getting tired. <laughs> getting dark, I'm knackered, a barn owl flew over and a rat ran across my feet so I think they're pretty good signs to go home. <laughs> I'm gonna wind in, get out of here, 
We'll have a little chat later on about how well this session went. I know I said we'd have a little uh, reconvene back at home, but uh, it just never happened. I never got round to filming any sort of outro. And now it's actually a couple of weeks later and I'm out fishing on a different stretch of river, but never mind. at least there's some rods in the background, not just my strobing light in my shed. <laughs> so yeah, awesome session. So good to have caught them six barbel and a bream, of course. Uh, I did feel like perhaps my energy was a little bit low, that, that half four star and staying on pretty much until darkness really took it out of me but there you go I was also busy battling fish which proper made up for it now yeah that was my most barbel I've ever caught in a day but I did think I could have had more it was a little bit disappointing that the sort of evening switch on that you sometimes get just didn't happen and I think that's possibly down to a couple of reasons uh, the river was in flood just like a few days before that session also, a lot of anglers turned up that evening. Um, didn't really realise it when I was fishing, but when I packed up, there was pretty much someone in every single peg and perhaps having too much bait out, too many lines, maybe put the fish off, who knows. But yeah, I did feel like it was gonna kick off and I was gonna reach like maybe 10 barbel, but it, it just never did. But there you go, I'm sure I'll be back with that session one day. <laughs> yeah, if you enjoyed what you saw, click subscribe for more to come. But uh, anyway, I'll see you on the next one, and if you're out barbel fishing, hope you guys have a great session too. This one's a bit mmm so far, <laughs> but it looks like there'll be a video to come anyway.